Okay, Wendy, I copied that very well. Um, the tank Please direct me to the VIP yacht parking. I have traveled three sleeps to come to your marina. In comedy, they say, get to know your audience. Since these were water people, I took to the bay in search of clues about them. I had traveled hundreds of yards and hours upon hours. Then, there it was. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Like a shimmering beacon of fiberglass hope, the Yatehe. It was the sign I had been waiting for. I knew then, today would be a good day to laugh. Attention, good people of Pittsburgh, California. My name is Mark Yaffe. I bring you comedy. I come in peace. I do not want your land. I only want your laughs. Tonight, 8 p.m. at the California Theater. Aho. Uh, KG6 DVD, this is KR4R. The Coast Guard in Alameda, California is now aware of your situation. Over. I owe you. Wait, to park in my own land? You owe me. And what is your course and speed, please? Over. Very well, I copy 210 at 6 knots. And the vessel is now just staying behind you, is that correct? Okay, uh, Wendy, do you have uh, the ability to contact them? dark and hilarious. Please welcome Mr. Mark Yaffe. Thank you so much. Yes, Pittsburgh CA, not Pittsburgh PA, Pittsburgh, California. Because my agent promised me my career was going places I never dreamed. What a great town, man. Thank you, East Bay. This is a great place. And we came in last night. We're uh, driving in on your Highway 4. They had one of these sobriety checkpoints. <laughs> you familiar with these? They'll take 20 cops. They had 20 cops at an intersection at 2 in the morning looking for drunk people. What a waste of money. I'm like, officer, you're looking for drunk people at 2 in the morning? I'm like, get your ass over to Denny's. <laughs> Really? Denny's at 2 a.m.? That's like spring break crashed into AA. <laughs> that's not a meal, that's a cry for help. <laughs> and if you get stopped, Pittsburgh, California, the police officers can ask you to submit to the police breath test. Mm -hmm. Only one group of people not afraid of the police breath test. Pot smokers. <laughs> because the breath test will not tell the cops you've been getting high. Unless you're so high, you start taking a hit off their breath of life. Uh, Holmes. I mean, Officer Holmes. <laughs> Sir, your pipe's clogged. Oh man, it's a crazy job, a crazy job. I got Strafe coming into town also by a pack of these Starbucks, yuppie, chiropractor, CPA, bikers, you know, right? <laughs> and the $10,000 male vibrators, come on. What? <laughs> what happened to the real bikers, Pittsburgh? The real bikers, you remember them? The one eye, the full beard, the 20 inch biceps. Now those were some tough women. <laughs> I'll tell you some tough people. We just worked in, uh, we worked in Duluth, Minnesota. I was there for New Year's Eve, 2014, December 31st, minus 34 degrees. I'm from California. I get hypothermia in the shade. 
minus 34 degrees with the wind chill factor. It was like minus two testicles. <laughs> Holy crap, my package went into hibernation behind my spleen. It didn't come out till Memorial Day. <laughs> What's wrong with those people? I can never live anywhere where it's warmer inside my freezer than it is outside of my house. My same agent, Captain Weather Channel, books me in Phoenix, Arizona for July 4th week. Yeah. A hundred and holy shit. My rental car came with oven gloves. What is their state bird, a roast turkey? We were leaving the Phoenix airport, we saw ladies' breast implants evaporate. If you've been to Arizona in the middle of summer, you know every living creature is pissed. We got flipped off by a cactus. <laughs> Sir, I don't even think they even have Mexicans in Arizona. I think they're just well done white people. <laughs> we were down there, we went to perform at the uh, Sun City, Arizona Retirement Community largest retirement community in the United States. The average age and average temperature in Sun City, all about 117. <laughs> we had a great time and they loved the show, they did. They all started clapping and all the lights went off. <laughs> started clapping again, all the lights came back on. There was a... My mistake though, when I was down there in Phoenix, I went to the rental car counter, asked the rental car attendant for an economy car. They gave me one of these smart cars. Has anyone here driven that Tupperware with wheels? <laughs> you shut the door, you burp the car. <laughs> I accidentally hit the horn on the smart cars, like dun 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 dun. <laughs> you better hope you don't get an accident in a smart car. Instead of an airbag, a clown's nose pops out. You smart car, you can't get in the I-80 or the uh, I-5 in a smart car. You're getting passed by Winnebago's and wheelchairs and <laughs> retired Amish people. <laughs> we got passed by the little yellow school bus. <laughs> when they went by, they had six dyslexic kids flipping us off. <laughs> <laughs> Nice thing about the smart car though, when you're done with it, Pittsburgh, you don't have to take it back to the rental car center. You just step on it, take it to aluminum recycling for redemption value. <laughs> no business with, the, business with the smart car, no business with the smartphone. Anyone else here called Verizon so much you got downgraded to the GED plan? <laughs> I'm now rocking the Motorola Moron. <laughs> It's too much. Voice navigation, voice dialing, voice texting, not 100% accurate. That voice navigation, when I was down in Arizona, I put on my phone, Phoenix, Arizona. 18 hours later, I was in Enid, Oklahoma. <laughs> and if you voice text, especially you fellas, if you voice text, you, you, you make sure you double check that because there's no do-overs once you send that voice text. My first smartphone in 2011, I put on my smartphone, honey, I don't need you to pick up milk. What came out on the other end was, honey, I don't need you, I picked up a MILF. Went to Canada recently, wow, Canada, that is the whitest country on the planet. Canada, Canada was so white, we'd even see a black bear. <laughs> you see a brother in Canada, you take a picture, that is like a Sasquatch sighting. <laughs> the most ridiculous part of this is they have a KKK in Canada. Why, that's like one K for every black person in Canada. And you know if they have a KKK in Canada, they got at least one French Canadian in their KKK, or as he would call it, the Klu Klux Klan. <laughs> Those knuckleheads, oh my goodness, man. They, uh, they're suing the state of Georgia, the Klu Klux Klan, suing the state of Georgia to adopt a highway for litter removal. That would be one scary road to get caught drinking and driving. <laughs> Cop pull out of your car. I got, geez, officer, I don't know what happened back there, man. I was just driving along. I, uh, I hit a big white cone.
KKK, that's the only organization stupid enough to have a uniform with a dunce cap. <laughs> Do we have any white supremacists tonight here? White supremacists, raise your hands. Any white supremacists? <laughs> I had one of these white supremacist Aryan Nation guys get in my face after a show. He goes, hey, you minorities, you all need to go back to your own country. I'm like, sir, I'm Native American. I'm in my own country. <laughs> so, last time I checked, you weren't on the guest list. <laughs> Started messing. He goes, what tribe are you from anyway? I said, I'm a California Sioux. I said, so far, I've sued Walmart. I've sued McDonald's. <laughs> I'm suing my agent. My agent booked me in Bartlesville, Oklahoma during Rodeo Week. Me and 3,000 drunk cowboys, you do the math. <laughs> I felt like Michael Vick working at Petco. <laughs> we had the other natives in the house, anyone else ready to party like it's 1491 up in here? Just, just me. I'll take an Italian with a bad back. Where's that guy? <laughs> How about a Puerto Rican with a dream catcher? <laughs> white people, where are the Caucasian people? White people, clap it up, white people, white people. There you go. You are getting very sleepy, very sleepy. <laughs> After the show, you will give back all of the land. <laughs> you will go to the nearest Indian casino and split threes against a dealer's 10. <laughs> And you will stop casting Lou Diamond Phillips as an Indian in your cowboy movies. <laughs> like a lot of natives, I am not full blood. I am actually a mixed blood, alcohol content. <laughs> Mexican, Irish, Navajo. We have any other Mexahos here tonight? No? Aztec Navajos, any Azhos? Huh? All right, do we have any hoes? Where are the hoes? Any hoes? I did that line in San Francisco. Eight Asian folks jumped up. Ho, oh, family! <laughs> Eight ho here for the show. I know some of you are doing the math. You're like, yeah, Mexican, Irish, Navajo. No drinking problem there. <laughs> Doctor slapped me at birth. I blew a .15. <laughs> he was like, congratulations, ma'am. You had a DUI. It's embarrassingly big baby at birth. I weighed 11 pounds, five ounces. Worst part was 11 pound head, five ounce body. <laughs> I was a globe on a Q-tip. Couldn't walk till I was almost three, couldn't hold my head up. <laughs> All my baby pictures, I'm like. But my mom had an easy delivery because I'm adopted. <laughs> yeah, so Navajo, adopted by a Mexican mother and a Jewish father. I'm a bargain hunter-gatherer. <laughs> illegal, too. I'm illegal, Pittsburgh. You cannot adopt an Indian child from their tribe. That's called the Indian Child Welfare Act. They pass that law to protect our people from Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Didn't find out I was Navajo until I was 25 years old. 25. All those years growing up playing cowboys and Indians, I was suiting up for the wrong team. <laughs> tried to bond with full blood natives, always a disaster. I went to a powwow, I tried to dance, they said, sit down, our people have suffered enough. <laughs> Got to check out the ancestry.com. I found out on my Navajo side, I found out my grandfather was a medicine man. I was all excited. My, yeah, grandpa was a medicine man. Turns out he's a pharmacist at CVS. <laughs> Only Indians still losing money in casinos. I suck. <laughs> Play a lot of Indian casinos. I was out in Wisconsin recently, performed at the Ho-Chunk Tribal Casino in Black River Falls, Wisconsin. I'm now an honorary member of the Ho-Chunk Tribe, because I lost a whole chunk of money. <laughs> Every time they get me on the 21, the blackjack, they had a little Vietnamese blackjack dealer. Her name was uh, Sun Yu Luz. <laughs> I 
And then I was walking out of the Ho Chunk Casino and pulling up into the, to the front entrance driveway was the Mayflower moving van. I'm like, I'm thinking, this is gonna turn out a little bit differently than the first time Mayflower rolled up on Indians. <laughs> Now, if you gamble, you got to be careful, Pittsburgh. They have celebrity slot machines. Have you seen this nonsense? There's actually a Jeff Foxworthy slot machine. There's a Michael Jackson slot machine, an Elvis Presley slot machine. They need a Dr. Phil slot machine. Every time you lose, you'd be like, what were you thinking? <laughs> Even if you win, like, you still got a problem. <laughs> Listen, mister, you can make a monkey eat a banana, but you cannot make an elephant shit cranberries. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Indian casinos. They're not all created equal. I was in uh, the Midwest. I had to perform at the Broken Dreams Casino pawn shop and fireworks stand. <laughs> I knew that was going to be a rough one because they sent the casino shuttle to pick us up at the airport. It was the Head Start Band. <laughs> I had to change two diapers. <laughs> We show up at the casino, it's a surf and turf night. Yeah, seaweed and crabgrass. <laughs> and they were promoing uh, cage fights after our comedy show. It turns out it was two cashiers wrestling in the change booth. <laughs> yeah, it's a trip. And that was a Craigslist casino. The roulette wheel was old hubcap with numbers painted on it. I saw a guy hit three sevens on a slot machine, a possum dropped out. <laughs> And I was up a whole big $17. I went to cash out. They tried to pay me in flour and coffee. What? <laughs> Thanks. The casino hotel was pretty scary. They had taken a Super 8 and downgraded it to like a sucky 6. <laughs> the sign outside the hotel didn't even say no vacancy. It just said no. <laughs> This hotel was so old, the Bible in my room didn't even have a New Testament. <laughs> I had a police chalk outline on my carpet. The, the safety chain was on the outside of the door. <laughs> They're like, we'll leave the light on. Well, I already hear the lights and sirens. Thank you. <laughs> be careful if you go to Vegas. Please be careful if you go to Vegas. Because now in Vegas, they, are, uh, they serve free drinks when you gamble. Really? Free drinks in a casino? That's like free blindfolds at a rifle range. I had so many free drinks the last time I worked in Vegas, I lost $300 on an ice machine. I went to the roulette table. I tried to buy a vowel. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Bullshit. What happens in Vegas stays on my credit report. Very uh, honored. I got to perform recently in San Diego. I performed at the National Indian Gaming Conference. It's a huge gathering where white people and Indian people figure out how to take more money from Asian people. <laughs> when I was down there, I went to the Asian uh, restaurant without Asian people. Have you been to the P.F. Chang's? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? That is not authentic Chinese food. They don't even have Mexican cooks. <laughs> I feel bad for the Chinese waiter because sometimes people go in the restaurant and do the voice to imitate them. I hope on their day off, I hope the Chinese waiter goes over to Burger King, makes fun of that stoner white kid working behind the counter. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so stoned. <laughs> I accidentally put a French fry in a milk shaker machine. <laughs> I don't know what they were smoking at the Burger King the other day. Stopped at lunch at Burger King. The guy that took our orders like, sir, let me for here to go. I'm like, dude, I'm in the drive-thru lane. <laughs> I know I was high when I got my food, only had two fries and half a Whopper. <laughs> the most disturbing part of the transaction though was the food runner that bought the food from the grill to the window had the forked tongue. Have you seen this where they thirdically split the tongue in two sections? Yes, I'm like, dude, why would you do that to yourself? He goes, and I quote, uh, women think they're sexy. Really? Ladies, when's the last time you wanted to kiss a rattlesnake with a lisp?
do too much flying. Anyone fly the uh, Southwest, the Air Peanut? Anyone? Oh my goodness. I don't know if you remember that Steve Miller song. I went from Phoenix, Arizona, all the way to Tacoma, Philadelphia, Atlanta, LA. That was my last flight on Southwest Airlines from Phoenix to Los Angeles. <laughs> we beat Greyhound by 10 minutes. <laughs> we didn't even get peanuts and a soft drink. They just passed around a salt lick and a canteen. <laughs> They're charging for everything now, these discount airlines. They had that safety announcement. In the event of sudden cabin depressurization, a mask will drop from above your head, and oxygen will be available for just $37. What? <laughs> Have you seen the oxygen mask on Southwest? It's a tuna can on the end of a garden hose. I think the scary ones that I don't like, you have to fly into the smaller cities. We had to fly it to North Dakota to the Minot International Airport. Really? First of all, one Pakistani cab driver does not make it an international airport. <laughs> you can't call it an international airport when your Walmart's bigger than the airport. That's... <laughs> Here's the rule. The smaller the city, the smaller the airport. The smaller the airport, the smaller the planes. The smaller the plane, the younger the pilot. Have you notice this? I peeked in the cockpit on that little wind-up plane. The pilot had braces and headgear on. <laughs> he was so young, his mom had to accompany him as the co-pilot. <laughs> we got to mine out 30 minutes late. She grounded him. <laughs> <laughs> Flew down to Mazatlan, Mexico. Got to do a show in Mazatlan. I was very excited about that. But then I got a little apprehensive, I'll be honest, because they, they want us to fly into the Mazatlan International Airport. I do not like flying in any airport where the initials are MIA. <laughs> That's like being admitted to the DOA Medical Center. <laughs> or attending the LOL School of Law. <laughs> Mexico's getting too Americanized down there. Anyone, yeah, you notice that? If you go down there now, and we were at the downtown Mazatlan at the theater, they were showing uh, uh, SpongeBob, uh, SpongeBob, yeah. <laughs> and Fifty Shades of Grey, except it was the Mexican version. It was uh, Fifty Shades of Primer. <laughs> <laughs> Too Americanized, man. They got a Carl's Jr. down there now. Carl's Juniors, <laughs> an Office Max, an Office Maximus, yeah, and a big Home Depot in downtown Mazatlan. And right across the street from the Home Depot. I saw 20 white guys looking for work. <laughs> yes, uh, myself, I, like I said, I'm native, uh, native I'm mixed, but I'm, I'm, I'm part, part uh, uh, white trash. You know? I'm honorary white trash. Because yeah? I've lived in a campground, a trailer park, and Reno, Nevada. <laughs> lived in a, <laughs> I lived in a 19-foot uh, travel trailer for a year and a half, yeah. Or as I called it, celibacy in a box. <laughs> No woman wants to get romantic in a, uh, on a kitchen table slash bed. <laughs> Moved to Reno, Nevada. I lived there in uh, three years in Reno. Moved there voluntarily, which proves one thing. You're never too old to keep making bad decisions. <laughs> Have you guys been to Reno? It is like Vegas got punked. <laughs> Reno, we don't get the Vegas shows. We get the knockoff Vegas shows, right? Vegas has Blue Man Group. Reno had White Powder Women. Vegas had O, oh, Reno had Oh No. <laughs> Vegas had Carrot Top, Reno had Muffin Top. <laughs> I lived in a very Latino area of Reno for a while. My uh, apartment building was so Hispanic that the kids in the apartment pool didn't even play Marco Polo, they played Marco Cholo. <laughs> Cell phone service wasn't even 3G, it was OG. <laughs> I think Reno's the tattoo capital of America, it is. I'm serious. So many people now have so many tattoos. Some of them don't even need to have a, a photo album or a cell phone with pictures on it. They just roll up their sleeves, start showing, oh, that's my four kids. There's my dog. It's a picture of my house. There's my grandma. Oh, yeah, this is a copy of my GED right here. <laughs> and some of the younger ladies are getting full breast tattoos. What the heck? What is going on there? There's no man that came home one night in this crowd and said, hey, babe, you know what look great on your breasts? A pair of wings, a school of dolphin, and a Maya Angelou poem. 
And how about uh, some of the other ladies are getting full poems and sayings tattooed all over down their back or their side. I saw this one lady in San Diego. It was from the bottom of her neck to the crack of her ass. It was like the Gettysburg Address, like four whores and seven beers ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, that writing looks all hot now in about 50 years. That's going to look like the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> your grandkids will be over your house with a magnifying glass reading Grandma. Drop it like it's hot. <sighs> It dropped all right. <laughs> okay, if I may, a quick public service announcement if I can. Uh, old white guys with the big long ponytails down here, the uh, 1960s are over. <laughs> and the young hipsters with the big ass bushy beards, the 1860s are also over. <laughs> what is this look here? Are you serious, Ulysses S. Grant? Come on now. Come. And it turns out, it turns out, the beer, the male beard, contains as much fecal matter as a toilet seat. <laughs> Ooh, you know what that means, fellas with the big ass beard. When you show up at the bar, before you even order a drink, you are already shit-faced. <laughs> I'm getting too old to party, I am. My buddies took me to one of these hip-hop clubs, and really, I had no business in a hip-hop club. You go in there, and you're over 40 years old, they were staring at me like I was the owner or an undercover cop. Scared the hell out of me. They're ordering drinks at the bar like slow screw, buttery nipples, screaming orgasm. That was too much pressure. I got a shot of blue balls and got the hell out of there. <laughs> too old for that. Anyone else just turned 40 like 14 years ago? Anyone? <laughs> Back in the day, I would party like it's 1999. Now I'm peeing like I'm turning 99. <laughs> When I was in my 20s, I could hold in a fart like Fort Knox. Now I'm ripping them like Looney Tunes. <laughs> I went to shake this guy's hand the other day. Like, <laughs> fist bump. <laughs> got to stay in shape, not to even look better, just to stay alive. You got to work out, right? I did my crunches this morning. I did. Uh, too bad they were Nestle's Crunch and Captain Crunch. <laughs> I do try to work out the gym regularly. I, I try to watch the TV at the gym. I do not know who they put in charge of the closed captioning, what three-fingered English is a third language GED reject is doing. Have you watched the closed captioning on your TV? I'm trying to catch the news. Uh, they, they were, they, the, the CMM as they report, was retorting that President Brick Alabama would be mating with rushing ladder bad mirror pudding over the Sitcher Asian in Whooping Crane. Was it? I did the Tai Chi for seven years. I did. I used to do the ancient martial art of Tai Chi, which is a very meditative, slow-moving martial art, which is great for freaking out someone on acid or <laughs> pushing an old guy down a flight of stairs. <laughs> yeah, Tai Chi, that'll get you pepper sprayed by the police. <laughs> like, dude, do we spray him or just shoot him, put him out of his misery? Look at this idiot. <laughs> I try to be peaceful, I try to be meditative, I have a bit of a violent look, I have a striking resemblance to a man by the name of Richard Ramirez, a.k.a. the Night Stalker. Yeah, great. Com comedian, looks like a serial killer. That's a nice fit. Man, I, thanks to that guy, I couldn't get a date for 10 years. I didn't even want a girlfriend, I just wanted an alibi. First of all, I could never be a serial killer because I have ADD. I'd get distracted after like one and a half victims. So. <laughs> Had an uncle, unc my uncle Ernie was a hom LAPD homicide investigator during that uh, crime spree this man was committing. And that was awkward. Family parties, he was always trying to refill my beer cup. He wasn't being nice, he was trying to lift prints. <laughs> He'd be asking questions like, how was school last semester? What'd you do on spring break? Uh, where were you on the night of August 18th? <laughs> Five Thanksgivings in a row, no cutlery. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had to sit at the kitty table with a spork. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I wasn't raised in the Native traditions, but I did find out Native Americans do celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah, they call it when good deeds go bad day. <laughs> <laughs> I love Thanksgiving, man. I eat the turkey, watch the football. You know that two years ago on Thanksgiving, 
the Redskins actually beat the Cowboys. Yeah. That has not happened a lot in the last 200 years. <laughs> people always do that. Oh, Mark, you're Native American. Are you offended by the Washington Redskins being Navajo? I'm like, no. I'm offended by the Washington Redskins being an NFL fan. <laughs> Holy shit, you want to honor Native Americans? Win a damn game, will you? <laughs> it's bad enough we lost the country. Now we got to lose the NFC East every year. I think the Indian on the side of the Redskin helmet should have a tear coming down his cheek. <laughs> like a lot of Native Americans, I did lose my land and home to the white man. In my case, it was my ex-wife's divorce attorney. <laughs> that was the second worst treaty ever. <laughs> yeah, I was in a mixed marriage. We had a mixed marriage. Uh, she's paranoid schizophrenic. I was obsessive compulsive. She'd invite over imaginary friends, and I'd make them take off their shoes before they came in my house. <laughs> On my way to my pretend man cave. <laughs> yeah, we married 22 years. Got divorced after 22 years. Worst part was, I was just three years away from my fifth blowjob. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, crazy, crazy. Man, you lose half your shit when you get divorced, yeah. Right? Half your shit, fellas. My uh, uh, Apache buddy, Ron Two Horse, got divorced. Now he's just Ron Horse. <laughs> my marriage literally went to the dogs. My ex-wife became a dog hoarder. We ended up with 14 Maltese dogs. You familiar with the Maltese? Yeah, that's a French word for shits all over the carpet. <laughs> Five-pound dog, 10-pound dookie. For those of you not familiar with the Maltese, it is a cream-colored dog with clingy fur that sticks to the wall when you throw them. <laughs> I am just kidding, dog lovers. I never laid a hand on those dogs. So I used a leaf blower. So. <laughs> she had unconditional love for those dogs. She didn't care if they crapped in the couch, barfed in the kitchen, humped the neighbor's leg. I'm like, geez, I wasn't even allowed one of those things. If I left the toilet lit up, I was cut off for three weeks, sleeping on the damn couch. Meanwhile, precious the Maltese is on my bed, tea bag, and my pillow. <laughs> she got remarried within a year. Within a year, that is kind of quick, Pittsburgh. But she didn't go for the newer, younger model. Uh-uh. No, she married a 67-year-old drunk, disabled diabetic. He's not even a sugar daddy. He's an insulin uncle. Now I'm back in the dating pool. I didn't know how to swim the first time. I, I suck. I've tried all the dating websites, eHarmony, Match.com, Stalker.net. <laughs> I hate dating. The rejection, the pepper spray, the restraining orders. Now 40 plus dating, different than 20 something dating, because fellas, when you're in your 20s, dating, that's all about testosterone, right? You're like, I want to meet a woman with nice ass. I'm like, no, I want to meet a woman with nice assets. Forget 36 double D, I want a good 401k. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Hang in there, married people. My parents, uh, this last July, celebrated their 62nd wedding anniversary. Isn't that awesome? 62 years. Yes. Their two favorite hobbies are cleaning and driving slow, so I bought them a street sweeper. They're awesome. They're in their 80s, so they're a little obsessed with their health. I actually had to change the voicemail on their answering machine. Now you call their house. It's like, hi, you've reached the Affies. We can't come to the phone right now because we're on the phone with a doctor. <laughs> on the way to a doctor. Or at a doctor. If this is a doctor, please press 1. HMO, press 2. Medical lab with test results, press 3. If this is at Pharmacist and Walmart, please hang up. We found cheaper prescriptions in Canada. <laughs> I love it. My dad's on the phone all day doing international drug deals. <laughs> right? Come, come down there, old Chapo. You got enough Lipitor to last four lifetimes. <laughs> yes. Please monitor your parents' and your grandparents' medication. The seniors have all the good drugs. My mom takes five pills. Just remember to take her other 10 pills. She has enough medication to stock three Charlie Sheen sleepovers and a Lindsay Lohan relapse party. 
our parents, weren't they just the same people when we were teenagers growing up? They said, don't do drugs or have sex, right? Now, thanks to prescription Medicare and Viagra, all they do is do drugs and have sex. <laughs> we can't even pop in on grandma and grandpa anymore. Now we got to give them four hours notice. <laughs> uh, Dad, can we come over today? No, what is it? Arthritis stiff or Cialis stiff? Is it bone or bone spray? I need to know. <laughs> it's Christmas, for God's sakes. <laughs> Oh, no, they're awesome. Still driving, still driving, mostly in a marked lane of traffic. Yeah. <laughs> My dad just turned 88. They gave him a five-year driver's license renewal. Way to go, California DMV. <laughs> <laughs> he had his first accident uh, last year. He had a patch of ice in Palm Springs, California. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dad, how did you do that exactly? Did you run over a drunk guy holding a daiquiri? <laughs> I can be honest, I can't believe he didn't crash sooner. He can't see shit. <laughs> like every other 88-year-old man, he has eyebrows like a woolly mammoth. Have you seen the old guys with the lobster brows going on there? <laughs> Looks like he gave birth to a pair of Brillo pads. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, don't kiss him. You'll put an eye out. <laughs> and ear hair like Chia Pet. <laughs> That's why the old guys don't turn their head when they change lanes. They can't see through that shrubbery. I'm worried about them, too. They're exhibiting gang member behaviors. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, my mom joined the Senior Bloods, the Red Hat Society. <laughs> they are the real OGs, old grandmas. <laughs> and my dad, his pants are now halfway down his ass. <laughs> Forget toys for tots. We need straps for paps. Good people, though. They are. I had, I had this disturbing comment from my mom the other day. She goes, you were such a good baby growing up. We would take you to the park and the beach and on picnics. We would leave you in the car. You wouldn't stir for hours. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, that's called heat stroke. <laughs> right? Back in the 1900s, that was hands-on parenting, wasn't it? Hands on, hands on our neck, hands on our shirt, hands smacking us on our backside. <laughs> I think it was a more violent generation back then, right? Because we would, we would, now kids play Call of Duty. We were playing live Call of Duty, right? I remember when I was a kid, we were playing like Dirt Cloud Wars, Slap Fights, Crack the Whip, Dodgeball, Smear the Queer. We were violent little homophobes. It's terrible. <laughs> the parents could hit us, the aunts, the uncles, the teachers, the neighbors. I think the mailman took a couple swings at me. Anyone here get hit by your own toys growing up? Anyone else get a wooden spoon every Christmas? <laughs> hit us with our own toys. We can't do that to our kids. Number one, CPS. Number two, we're not wasting a perfectly good $300 Xbox. Yeah. Right? Back in the day, we had no Xbox. We had cardboard box. There was no Wii. There was just us. <laughs> there was no ADD either because we had to play in the street. That'll fucking make you pay attention. <laughs> I couldn't wait for the street lights to come on. I was the worst live Frogger game ever. <laughs> toys that would kill and maim. We had toys like, our toys were lawn darts, slip and slides, BB guns, slingshots, firecrackers, click clacks. And remember that? Two glass balls on a string. What could go wrong there? <laughs> Everybody knew at least one kid with missing fingers or a glass eye. <laughs> if he got pissed at you, he'd throw that glass eye at you. <laughs> <laughs> you never see injured kids anymore, almost never. Close, you don't see kids outside playing. The closest I came to an injured kid was my neighbor's son. He had that ace bandage around his wrist. I go, dude, what happened to you? He goes, uh, uh, carpal tunnel, Grand Theft Auto 4. Yeah, so I, uh, like I said, I grew up in a two-parent home, but I, it was a broken home because a lot of stuff didn't work very well. Right? <laughs> Seriously, man. Growing up, our, our toolbox was a Donald Duck lunch pail. <laughs> My dad thought DYI meant mix his own cocktails. <laughs> One time I needed to uh, uh, fix my bicycle. I said, hey, Dad, can I have a screwdriver? He goes, what are you talking about? You're only 11, and we're out of vodka. Yeah, man, my dad, I love my dad. My dad's cool. He's cool. But you know, like every son, 
There comes that time in a young man's life where the son and the father come to really harsh words or they're ready to throw down, right? Come to blows, right, fellas? That happened uh, three months ago at my dad's 88th birthday party. <laughs> well, I took a beat down with a bedpan, I'll tell you what. <laughs> that is embarrassing at the senior apartment. <laughs> They live, in, we are, they live in a senior independent apartments, and the seniors love their bingo. I tell you what, I, I was there the other day. They were playing senior bingo. It's different than regular bingo. In senior bingo, when they call out O2, everybody puts on their oxygen mask. <laughs> then the bingo caller's like, I-68. Lady in the back yelled out, bullshit, you're 85. This is a sad fact. We have uh, um, over $100 billion in unpaid child support, deadbeat dads in this country. $100 billion. How is this possible? And some of these guys are still out trying to make more kids. We need to have a campaign to put a stop to that. We need an Operation Cock Block. <laughs> Project Limp Dick. <laughs> yeah, the motto would be, if your kids don't get paid, you're not getting laid. No excuse for this. We can put an end to these guys trying to hit on women and make more kids. We have the technology. Right? Two million cell phone apps. You mean we can't come up with a deadbeat dad face recognition cell phone app? Heck yeah, we can. Right, ladies, tonight after the show, you go to a bar, some guy comes up to you, hey, can I buy you a drink? I'm like, oh, well, hold on, let me check. Uh, uh, no, you can't buy me a drink, but you can try buying your kids some school clothes. That's what you can do. <laughs> I feel bad. I almost feel bad for deadbeat dad. Deadbeat dad on Father's Day. That must feel like a Native American on Columbus Day. <laughs> Can we finally get rid of this Columbus Day nonsense, please? All right. Really? They say Columbus discovered America, right? That's like saying the Titanic discovered icebergs. <laughs> they say Columbus, he sailed the wrong way. They said he discovered America. My cousin drove the wrong way. He discovered jail. Third largest holiday now, I believe, is Halloween. I didn't know this. Halloween. You know who should love Halloween? Jehovah Witnesses. That's the only time people open the door for them. <laughs> All right, here you go. Here's the three musketeers. I'll take the two watchtowers. Awesome. <laughs> this is an interesting uh, scenario I had when my daughter turned 15. She started dating a Jehovah Witness boy. Yeah, it was awkward. I, I did not approve. I broke them up. I threw him a surprise birthday party. <laughs> Got two daughters, two daughters in college at the same time. It's ridiculous. I'm old enough to be their dad. I'm broke enough to be the roommate. <laughs> I pay so much tuition now, my cholesterol level is now higher than my credit score. I went to a financial counselor. He referred me to the suicide hotline. Visa called my house. Visa called my house. Hey, Mr. Yaffe, we haven't received your last payment. I'm like, sir, trust me, you've received my last payment. <laughs> I'm broke. Country's broke. I'm sorry. We're going to have to raise taxes in this country, but not on hardworking Americans. I think we need a stupidity tax in the United States. I think we could wipe out the deficit with this 50% surcharge. Stupidity tax, and he's a 50% surcharge on anyone watching Honey Boo Boo, <laughs> Keeping Up with the Kardashians, or any show starting with the words Real Housewives of, Deficit Solved. <laughs> yeah, I was watching the TV the other day. They're claiming uh, no more racism in the United States, no more racism. Well, there's sure as shit still some favoritism, isn't there? Come I mean, look at this. We got the Megan's Laws and Amber Alerts. There's no Taniqua laws. There's no Guadalupe alerts. <laughs> spray on tans for the white people. There's no spray on whitener for minorities. <laughs> when did you come up with that one? Whoop, whoop. Oh, dude, hey, reach in that glove box. Give me a cup, can of that cop be gone. And shh. I just, I just don't like politics anymore. Politics is kind of yucky, right? But back in the day, 
We used to be about us supporting a candidate or supporting a cause. Now it's all twisted around where they try to get us to uh, vote against a candidate or vote against a cause, right? You see, you've heard our commercials on TV. They're like, Steve Posner wants to be governor of California. <laughs> but what do we really know about Steve Posner? <laughs> Fact. Steve Posner has been to the state of Hawaii five times. Fact. Barack Hussein Obama is from Hawaii. Fact. Steve Posner once ate Italian food in San Francisco. Fact. Nancy Pelosi is an Italian from San Francisco. Posner, Obama, Pelosi, a dangerous alliance we can't afford. Paid for by a coalition of firefighters, seniors, and prescription drug abusers. <laughs> of course, now immigration is a big hot button issue. Uh, Donald Trump, since he wants to build a big, beautiful wall between the U.S. and Mexico, yeah, he wants to build a 2,500 mile long wall, 30 feet high between the U.S. and Mexico. What a waste of money. You build a 30-foot high wall between the U.S. and Mexico, Mexico become the largest producer of 31-foot extension ladders. <laughs> and pole vaulting become their new national sport. <laughs> they will be at that wall like, yes, we can, si se puede. <laughs> Come on, 2,500-mile long wall ain't gonna stop shit. <laughs> 2,500 miles of shark-infested waters and a leaky boat did not stop the pilgrims. <laughs> Or as my ancestors call it, the worst surprise costume party ever. <laughs> you build that wall high enough between the U.S. and Mexico, I bet you Mexico would launch their own space program. <laughs> we had the Apollo space program. They would have the Apoyo Loco space program. <laughs> that would be the first space shuttle with 147 men, women, and children on board. <laughs> Mijo, get up here, driving my license is suspended. I'm not going to NASA jail. <laughs> I don't care if you're only 12, you can reach the pedals, get up. <laughs> you just can't blame everything on illegal immigrants. That's part of the problem, maybe a small part of the problem. But my neighbor, just, he just gets so bent out of shape. He goes, Marcus, those damn illegals come over the border, taking our jobs, driving down the price of wages. I'm like, no, I said, people. Sneaking over the border from Mexico aren't driving down the price of wages. Methamphetamine addicts are driving down the price of wages. Who else can I get to cut my grass for like $2 with scissors? <laughs> hey, Mr. Yaffe, I squeegeed your bushes and vacuumed your driveway at no extra charge. <laughs> Thank you, Ichabod Crank. So, uh, as you probably know, not too many Native Americans doing the comedy thing. You know, we're only 1% of the population. You're aware of this, right? So I'm thinking, hey, if you want to put an end to illegal immigration, put Native Americans in charge. We won't get fooled on that one again. 1% <laughs> of the population out of 310 million Americans, we are 1%. I believe at one time, uh, Native Americans were like 100% of the population. <laughs> It's awkward. I've been to a native powwows where there's so few Indians, you wouldn't even see any, barely saw an Indian. I was at a uh, powwow in Carlsbad, California, the grand entry. Three Indians, two Samoans, and a Mexican pushing a tamale cart. <laughs> we need TV. TV's the great equalizer, man. We can educate people about natives. I think everyone else has their own network. Why don't natives get their own network? And black folks have BET. The gay folks have Logo TV. My people, Mexican, Irish, Navajos, we got Cork TV. <laughs> it's time for all Native American network. We'll call that TP TV, <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on, we'll have shows like Survivor Reservation, <laughs> Wheel of Misfortune, <laughs> Whose Land Is It Anyway? <laughs> you go places, or I've been places people don't, have never met a Native American, even a mix like me. It's awkward. People aren't sure how to react sometimes. I was in Omaha, Nebraska, doing a show with my native buddies, and we're staying at the hotel. The housekeepers heard we were staying there. My housekeeper wanted to try to bond with me. She decided to make the approach by showing up my door. 7.30 in the morning, I get this knock on my door. Like,
Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much, Pittsburgh, California. I really appreciate it. Thank you.